the season starts now. This will be the first video properly of this playthrough with Pro Basketball Manager 2023. In the previous video, it was just an explanation on how to start a journeyman career, basically as an unemployed coach. You may have seen that the team that hired me was Dinamo Zagreb. Now, I have done some research before recording this, because I had zero knowledge of this team beyond one player I knew in the roster. So Dinamo is a team recently promoted from the second division of Croatia, so it is going to be a tough season. If I check the objective set by the team owners, they say that I'm supposed to end at middle table by the end of the season. But I want to focus this video in discussing how to organize the team tactics and playstyle, as well as the roster. Now in the background you can see that I'm checking the staff of the team because I started with no scout and I need one. Also because I joined the team later, there are already some attempts to hire new players and I cancelled these offers because I think we have enough exterior players, although I may need to sign a center. I also spent some time allocating training preferences, although this is the part that I'm not sure how parameters work in the game yet. I made training to be 4 hours per day, high intensity for the first weeks, so players can get good shape earlier. And then I'll change it to normal intensity. Finally, I will not check in detail Zagreb's youth team, mainly because players are quite low skilled and also because I probably will not be coaching this team next year, unless I manage to secure a post in FIBA EuroCup or Champions League, so I don't have any interest in checking them or promoting them. The next important thing is to establish the starting roster and the bench roster. I have 12 players to choose from. I tend to go position by position, marking the players and comparing their stats. I'm going to leave a link to another video from last year where I did this in more detail. For now, let me tell you my key points from the roster that I can see. Maybe they can be useful when evaluating your own team when you don't know the players very well, like in this case for me. So the first thing is that I don't really have much outside defense. My players are not able to defend any opponent playmaker or shooting guard and leaves me very exposed. Second thing is that my backcourt is basically good at shooting three points and perimeter shots, but at nothing else. They cannot penetrate inside, they cannot dribble, they cannot even do playmaking. Third is that I don't really have much small forward that is good. They can defend and they can rebound, but nothing else. And four is that I don't really have any inside game. I only have two centers, no power forward, and they are not really that good in rebounding or even attacking. So again, my offense is very one dimension. Shoot from outside and that's it. For the sake of completion, here is my starting five. I will put Duganzic as point guard, Brucinic and his rating of 19 three-pointers as shooting guard, then two small forwards in Bucic and Novacic, so I will play with a small lineup, so no power forward, and the center will be Damir Markota. Hopefully his experience will make a difference. And the final part of the team setup is about tactics. I tend to set offensive tactics at the beginning of the season, but for the defensive tactics, I mostly modify during the game depending on how the match goes. So let me discuss how I set up defensive tactics. I think there is a lot more information that the game could provide you, especially nowadays that data analytics is so important and when there are plenty of advanced statistics in real basketball. For the moment in the game, I had to create my own statistics. So basically, there are four types of attacking actions. Two-point shots, three-point shots, drives or layups, and post-ups or inside shots under the basket. In addition, there are other actions like putbacks after offensive rebound and quick fast breaks after turnover, but for the first four you can establish who in the team should prioritize each type of shot. So I get an idea from the ratings that I know I don't have anybody really good at penetrations and layups or even inside shooting. But I want to see a little bit more advanced statistics in the sense of how good each player is in each type of attacking action, how often they take a shot, what is their efficiency, etc. And I need to calculate this myself. For the moment, how do I do it? I make it so that for the first three games, each player plays two quarters per game. I have not set any shooting priority, so everybody's balanced. And when the match was playing, I was writing down the type of shot each player was making, whether it was successful or missed in an Excel sheet. Again, I wish the game would provide you with this information so then you can compare your team with the average of the league and so on, or you can scout properly tactics and strategies of the rival. So hopefully for the 2024 version, we will have it. Here is a quick glance at the results. On average, I counted 88 possessions per game, which is a normal number for European basketball. In the NBA, it tends to be close to 100 possessions per game. Points per possession was higher than the average on the EuroLeague. 
Of these 88 possessions, 77% ended in shots, 17% in foul, and 6% in turnover, which is not bad at all. And actually from the shots, the majority were three-point shots and penetrations. I know from the player ratings that we have good perimeter shooters, but very bad people at cutting to the basket and trying layups, so that's something to take into account later and I have to try to reduce the number of layups. I also see that we had almost no fast breaks, which means that we are not able to steal the ball and score in transition. Again, as I said, we are very bad at defense. More things. This is the efficiency of the four types of shots. Basically, the division between shots made and attempted, and also the points per possession. It confirms what I was finding before, that my team is bad at penetrations and also in the interior game. We may need to reinforce the center position or have a proper power forward, but at least we have good shooters. And finally, player by player. Usually it is the guards who take most of the shots. They are the most efficient scorers as well. The best seems to be the starting point guard that I had in mind, Duganzic, with good percentages and offensive rating. The other point guard is terrible, and Zulovic seems not to be able to score properly, and he is very inefficient, so I will probably have to try another of the guards and make Anzulovic the third playmaker or even transfer him to another team. The two shooting guards are equally good, so it may make no difference who is starting and who is sitting. And then the forwards and centers are not terribly good. They cannot score consistently, not even a quality guy like Damir Markota, which is a shame because it means that our attack will have to be very limited to exterior shots. Finally, some extra information on how well my starting five do at each type of shot. This is what I will use to set up offensive priorities between two-point shots, three-point shots, layups, and inside shooting. And again, it would be great if the game provided this information already. And that's it for today. There's a lot more of stats that could be provided in the game, like offensive rating with the player on court versus the player in bench, plus minus, points scored in front of each type of defense, but these are things I cannot calculate by hand. In any case, I can now properly start the season. By the way, these three games that, that I have already played, all three with a win. So it is not starting bad at all. See you next, and let's see how we do.